Here to talk you through the concerns, Associate Professor of Medicine at Yale, Dr. Perry Wilson. Good morning. So AstraZeneca's efficacy rate is said to be about 70.4%. That's noticeably lower than Pfizer and Moderna. So um, would you prefer to get one of those vaccines with a higher um, rate? Uh, that is, you know, if we get a choice. I mean, right now we're not at that point. Good morning. <laughs> that's right. Good morning. That's that's the key point is that we're unlikely to have that choice um, anytime soon. So the best advice, whatever you can get, you should get sooner rather than later. Don't hold out for one vaccine or another. And let me point out that, remember, the FDA had said that 50 percent efficacy was their threshold for where they would approve a vaccine. Seventy percent is really good. So let's not, you know, get get sort of uh, blown away by by the 95 percent. Seventy percent is a great vaccine. If that's all that's available around you, if that's all you can get, by all means, get it. Do not wait. Do you think the trial period was long enough to ensure that it is safe for hundreds of millions of people to take? Yeah, I, I understand the concerns. Um, the vast majority of side effects from vaccination occurs right after the vaccination, anywhere from you know minutes to, to weeks, and in rare cases, even a month or two afterwards. And we have that data. We know that the serious side effects are incredibly low in that time window. Now, we, you're right, we don't know if a year from now something strange could crop up, but that's incredibly unlikely. One thing I want to point out is that mRNA, which is the, the substance inside the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, is incredibly fragile. It's so fragile that you can only ship it around the country if it's, you know, in deep freeze conditions uh, for Pfizer and pretty darn cold for Moderna as well. It breaks down very, very quickly inside your body. It is not hanging around after you get the vaccine for months. So I think it's really unlikely we're going to see strange long-term side effects that we haven't already seen in the trials. So why, why do you feel that Dr. Anthony Fauci says that even people who had COVID and recovered from it would still be um, advised to get a vaccine? Why? Well, we, we know that people can get reinfected. It does seem that that's rare, but we uh, we have seen that happen before. Um, we also know that the vaccines, in terms of antibody levels, lead to higher antibody levels than native infection in most people. So you're probably more protected with a vaccine. And finally, we're not sure if people who have been infected in the past might have subclinical infections, infections that aren't very obvious to them that they can nevertheless pass on to people who aren't yet vaccinated. So from a public health standpoint, it makes sense. Just get vaccines into as many people as possible. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Dr. Wilson, nice to talk to you. Good job.